Well, uh, everyone's had a say on AUKUS, so we're going to get more reaction now. Joining us is the former Major Army General, Peter Lay. Peter, good to see you. Thanks for your time. So, on the face of it, what do you make of it? I think it's a good thing, Pete. It's been coming for a while. It delivers on the promise of government in the 2020 strategic update where they talked about deterrence and nuclear-powered submarines in conjunction with the United States and the United Kingdom deliver that deterrence. Mm. Uh, it's going to be necessary for the future. Uh, we're seeing assertive and aggressive action from China. We've seen them with uh, a new government coming out of their Congress talking about a, a ring of steel. They're talking about encirclement and a range of things like that. Uh, Australia and our alliance partners needed to act. This will take some time to deliver, but this is necessary and welcome. Yeah, and, uh, and so now all eyes turn to the Defence Strategic Review, which the Defence Minister has in his possession, and uh, he'll be formulating a response in the coming weeks. I was chatting to Mick Ryan about this on Monday, and he suggested and, and asked the question of the government what cuts are now going to be taken from the defence program to make way for these nuclear subs. Do you have that question? And if so, what might you propose the answer is? Well, I certainly have that question. Uh, I propose that the answer is going to be what we traditionally call a guns versus butter budget. Uh, I'm not sure that we can cut much out of the Department of Defence. I know that uh, some pundits, some journalists, uh, and, and I really am a bit outraged by their concerns that we don't need an army in the future. Well, I'd like to be that confident that I can predict the sort of warfare that will be run in the future. Yeah. Uh, I think we're going to see that, um, well, we've already known there's $38 billion required for an increase in the size of the Australian Defence Force and the Australian Public Service. That's out to 2040. We know that there's a range of other impositions we also know, or well, we don't know, what the Defence Strategic Review is going to deliver. I can bet that won't be cheap. So I think we're going to see, rather than cuts out of the Department of Defence, we're going to see pressure on the broader budget. And as I said, guns versus butter, okay. butter in this case, being welfare. But is there any you know, programs in defence or is there any sorts of equipment uh, or technology that's becoming obsolete, that's becoming outdated, that we could do away with, or is there none? Oh, there's certainly going to be some, and, and we have to go and find that and make sure that uh, the whole capability delivery system, it takes a very long time. Make sure that the sustainment and maintenance system is run as best as we can make it. So um, I think we're going to see replacements. Let's talk about some of the missiles they're talking about. That might replace some of the older artillery systems. Um, some of the missiles on ships, uh, we perhaps don't need the types of ships, and I think there's talk that we might get Corvettes and they'll have fewer crew. But if we're going to have a larger defence force and one of the major costs of defence is personnel, uh, we're going to have to think very carefully about automated systems. Perhaps the current uh, RAAF aircraft we've got at the moment are the last manned aircraft we're going to have in Australia. Mm. Yeah, uh, well, I think drones are uh, on the wish list. Um... That's for sure, although Richard Miles is not really getting specific about that anyway. It's all ahead of the Defence Strategic Review. Peter, uh, good to chat to you this morning. We will get you on again for sure in the lead-up to that, but uh, good points this morning, particularly troop numbers. I think we're going to need a whole lot more than 80,000, which is the plan over the next 20 years, to deal with all of this. Thanks, Peter. We'll talk to you soon.